Over the last couple of weeks, FreeGem have been hard at work on their new project, Robocraft 2. Also, in true FreeGem fashion, information concerning the game is leaking out at a slow but controlled and steady rate, and I will be going over these, speculating on the potential significance and sharing further thoughts concerning these and more. At the same time, people who had last played Robocraft at various points during the years have been getting hyped at the prospect of a new Robocraft, with many of these, myself included, being only too happy to share our thoughts. Already we are beginning to see glimpses of new parts that are specifically being built for Robocraft 2, and the first of these is a new rig for wheels, in a more futuristic style, befitting of the game. Now this absolutely looks nice. It is heavily my opinion, however, that FreeGem should also retain as many parts from tech blocks as reasonably possible. The main limitation with tech blocks models may be that they were made without team colors in mind. The next thing that FreeGem revealed is a pilot seat. It looks awesome and it appears that the blue section of this model can be coloured. Now with the concept of Robocraft but better in mind, I feel the need to propose to FreeJam to allow players to colour not just one, but two colour aspects of each part. In the case of this seat, for instance, one could recolour both the blue and yellow sections, maybe even the black. Maybe the easiest way to go about this is to introduce parallel paint modes, and to be fair, not all parts would need to have a second colour to paint. In this way, one would introduce a greater degree of customization. Speaking of different colours, again in the spirit of Robocraft but better, it would be great if a player could modify their own bot's team colour by their own perspective, as well as the colour of their user interface. For the sake of avoiding confusion, one's allies would still be blue in team colour, and enemy players would still be red in team colour, but from one's own perspective, one can, for instance, have the colour purple as a bot's highlight colour. One's health bar and crosshair could be yellow, whether fully opaque or translucent. The user interface would probably be chosen on an account-wide basis, while something like bot accent colour could be selected on a bot-by-bot -bot basis. One's chosen accent colour would normally only be seen by the players themselves, but could be revealed to other players in any all versus all mode like the pit, which could be awesome. One of the next things that FreeGem have teased is the new guns. These seem to be two different variants of the same gun, with the main difference being in length. These are promising enough results. It kind of looks like a futuristic pistol or rifle barrel. I am curious to see how these weapons develop. I do notice, however, that these prototypes seem to have just a single connection point. It may be due to these being more simple weapons, but I think that it would be desirable to avoid a situation where players ignore the barrel of a gun to shoot at its mounting connection point, because it is that much easier to knock out. A gun barrel having two connection points, or more, would go a long way to mitigate this potential issue, and this modification in the bottom right is a modification with more connection points in mind. Speaking of guns, we got a first glimpse of what a turret might potentially look like. This got me thinking, as players will be wanting to encase their guns in turret armor for artistic and practical reasons. However, there may be a danger of a projectile interfering with the hitboxes of the turret encasement. One could widen the aperture to mitigate this problem, or alternatively spawn the shot outside of the bot, but this may pose issues of its own. As such, in the spirit of encouraging a wider build, perhaps a new block material that allows all projectiles to pass through might be interesting. Well that was the first match, it's time for an intermission, 
And this is a good time to mention that RoboNews is back. I will be linking RoboNews' Twitter page down below. It is nice to see this make a return, and I do hope that the lore of Robocraft becomes more tangible this time around. I am curious to see if the timeline of Robocraft 2 might be set some years after the events of Robocraft 1. Not that the events of Robocraft 1 were ever very clearly defined, but maybe we'll see more of that during development over time. Maybe we'll find out why Protonium is such a sought-after element, where all the humans are, and what is the purpose that players are aiming towards. Okay, let's get back to more new things about Robocraft 2 that Freejam have revealed. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines because that is precisely what Freejam has very recently revealed. They have stated that this particular model is designed with heavier ground vehicles in mind. It is very likely that this will supply movement power to movement parts in the same way that TechBlox engines currently supply power to wheels. What this has me wondering, however, is whether Freejam has any plans as regards energy in general. In current Robocraft, one uses energy primarily to power one's weapons, and this power was the same independently of what kind of bot one fielded. It is hoped that this time around, Freejam will take the concept of scaling to heart, and the first step towards that is to have energy be something that a player needs to invest in, just as with any other thing in the build. Now, I somehow doubt that engines will directly power weapons, but I do think that there is potential for energy converter and capacitor parts to fill the void of uncertainty. On a very different note, these last days we got an early peek at the new build bay that is being designed for the new game. Considering that serious players will be spending a lot of time in this area, it makes sense to make the space as low-key awesome as one can possibly do. Something that is very telling about these screenshots is that they constitute the first hard evidence that Freejam are building Robocraft 2 on tech blocks. Well, that is what it seemed, however, it turns out that there already are such significant differences between Tech Blocks and Robocraft 2 that any Tech Block builds inserted for promotional purposes aren't currently functional. As such, it is likely that all Freegem product users, including those of Robocraft 1 and Tech Blocks, can expect to not be able to port their builds to the new Robocraft 2. I guess the positive in this is that users will experience the joy of rediscovering what it feels like to build in an unfamiliar build environment, hopefully with build tools which bring the best of both Robocraft and tech blocks together and more. I have heard that it is planned to allow players to rotate their builds that were accidentally built the wrong way. And this should spark hope in those of us whom have felt the pain of completing a build only to realize that it's been facing the wrong way the entire time. While speaking of build bays, I think that it will be interesting to see how the build bay will end up interacting with the rest of the game's user interface. Will we players find ourselves loading out into a busy yet informative main menu, like in Robocraft 1? Will we instead find ourselves loading out into a more streamlined yet more bare-bones screen, as was the case with the work in progress user interface in place for tech blocks? If I were to choose between the two approaches, I would definitely choose Robocrafts every time. However, I do acknowledge that there are a few features that I would have liked to have seen even there such as being able to create folders to move my build base into and to reduce the need for scrolling through all 100 or so builds that I have. A view filter by movement, weapon or other parts would also be helpful. For a game as complex as Robocraft, it seems that some kind of loading screen is inevitable. However, such loading screens could be better if a player, for instance, would still be able to interact with the game's in-chat feature at all times without interruptions. Needless to say, the less downtime that a player needs to experience, the better. 
That applies not only before matches begin and also during such matches, but also after they end. I'm looking at you, post-match reward screen, level up screen and of course battle pass screen. All these things should be incorporated on a different level independently of the game flow, such as what I'm proposing with chat. This improves the player's overall experience and gets us to focus more on actually playing the game. With this information in hand, it is even more so, my view, that the tech block parts should remain in the game, if at all possible. Even if they as parts lack team colors, if that proves to be a balance issue, then simply balance them accordingly to be, for instance, slower and tougher than regular wheels. Other parts will give away team colors. The allure of more parts options seems to be too good to pass up. Well, that's all I have for you so far. I intend on continuing to cover developments of this game, as well as to provide feedback on things that I think may make for a better Robocraft. So, what did you think of these developments? If I were to ask you how Robocraft 2 can become Robocraft but better, what might you suggest? Let me know down in the comments below and I will meet you there. Thank you for watching.